God bless. I pray you had a great day today. Beautiful day. Amen. No rain outside. Although I am not complaining, praise God. I'm grateful that God, amen, sent us the rain. I pray that each one of you just been blessed, determined to have your day according to God's plan for your life. Amen. With a mindset, praise God, to serve him, not to allow anything to disappoint you. God bless you, Sister Margaret. Amen. Not letting anything disappoint us. Amen. Praise God. Bless you, Sister Yafat. Amen. Bless you, Sister T. Amen. We're, we're determined not to let anything disappoint us or, or discourage us anymore. Um, I believe that, praise God, I have authority over anything that's not like you. God bless you, Sister Belinda. God bless Sister Patty. Um, anybody else agree with me? We got to start taking authority over everything that thinks has got authority over us. Is that all right? Amen. Um, God bless you, Sister Vonda. Amen. Bless you all. Bless you, Sister Margaret. Praise God. Amen. All right. We bless you, evangelist. Bless you. God bless you. Pray you've been blessed today. Amen. Amen. Pray you've been blessed today. All right. Let's uh, share. All right. Amen. Bless you, a missionary amazed. Amen. Got my grass cut. Praise God. Amen. I'm just blessed all the way around. Amen. Amen. So I just um, been favored of the Lord. Amen. Um, Father's Day weekend, saints of God. Amen. I know, praise God, some of your fathers are going on, but if your father is still here, be a blessing to him. Amen. Seed into their lives, those men that has covered you and blessed you. Amen. Do so. Amen. Let the God knows. Amen. That you're with them. Share out. Let's go to work. Amen. Let's go to work today. We pray to finish up disappointment. Amen. No, we talking about the potholes, but disappointment is a very uh, challenging thing. And disappointment leads to a couple of other things. Amen. And we're going to go right from there tomorrow into the area where disappointment carries you. Amen. Because once you get disappointed, there's another level, amen, that the enemy comes because steals, kill, and destroy. There's three levels, amen, that he attacks in there, amen. And it's all about, amen, that separate, uh, divide, and conquer, amen. So all of it lines up together. All of it's his tricks, amen. Is that all right? So praise God. Bless you, Sister Andrea. Praise God. See you there also. Um, you know our foundation scripture is coming. Praise God. Second Corinthians eleven chapter, second chapter, eleven verse, talking about Amen. Don't don't give the devil any room. Praise God. Amen. Because he'll take advantage. Let us read it so that no advantage will be taken by Satan, for we are not ignorant concerning his devices. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for another time together. Grateful for this opportunity once again to just teach and, and learn from each other, God, and how you allow us to pour out, God, and, and really bless each other, Lord. We ask God now in the name of Jesus as we go forth in this lesson, God, that you and you alone get the glory. We speak against anything that's not like you, God, asking for your favor, your anointed power, and your grace. In Jesus' anointed name, amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. Listen, so you know, y'all remember that scripture. The reason why he adds that, praise God, he's trying to tell us that's going to give the devil any room. Amen. Because once you give him room, he'll take advantage of it. Amen. So we are not, we don't want to be ignorant concerning his devices. Amen. We got to be, amen, so against him. So that's why we are working, praise God, um, talking about these potholes. And the first one, I mean, we started off with your job assignment. Amen. For those, amen, that was three days ago, go back and look at it, praise God, talking about when God has assigned you to do something in the church, amen, you become disappointed because of the people and, and the things that go wrong in that assignment. Then we talked about, praise God, yes, but not that way. That's when we made a prayer unto God, amen, and he, amen, answers, but he doesn't do it the way that you expect. And I said, yeah, but yes, but not like that, amen. I said, uh-uh, I'm going to do it, but not the way you think I'm going to come. And that's all right with me. As long as God is in control, I'm all right. Then this one we were talking about last yesterday, praise God, was yes, but wait. And I know right there, praise God, that's an ugly one. Because that's the one, praise God, when we wait a long time, we feel that God, amen, has really, our prayer was not answered. Amen. And I looked in the Bible, praise God, and amen, there's many men. And one said, God, 
why, why, why hadn't you answered? He said, well, I had dispatched an angel, praise God, amen, on his way, but the adversary got in the way. The adversary was attempted to try to delay, but he could not deny. And that's what the enemy does sometimes. And there's sometime I was telling you, praise God, the reason why God have us to wait, he's equipping us. Remember the things I said, praise God. He's making sure we're ready. Making sure we're right, making sure the season is right. Come on, somebody. Those are very critical, important things. And and all of us know, praise God, and all of us can say, he's always on time. And I hear a lot of people say that a lot, but a lot of us mad at him because he don't come on the time we want him to come. But amen, after we allow God and really begin to understand, God is always on time. God knows exactly when and what and how to do it and when to do it, praise God. And we we talked about that much last night, but I want to talk about, praise God, waiting. Um, I find a lot of times that, praise God, the word discouragement comes, and that's going to be our word for tomorrow. We'll start tomorrow. Discouragement sets in after disappointment. It, it, disappointment and discouragement has a, their, their, their kin fin. They're matter of fact, they're brothers and sisters, amen. They, they work right hand in hand because once you get disappointed, you become discouraged, amen. Amen, in your walk. And discouragement leads to, amen, other areas, praise God, own into giving and quitting. Amen. And all those are potholes, but discouragement, praise God, lines up with disappointment. And so when you know, amen, that God, you're waiting, amen, and you got to learn to trust God. First of all, we automatically go to God and pray, amen, and automatically think God is on his way with our situation, on his way with the answers, praise God, and we're willing to hold on, but more it becomes magnified, and the more it becomes a struggle, and more it becomes a hindrance, the more, praise God, we begin to say, well, where are you, Lord? Where are you in this situation? Amen. We begin to, amen, really, really, praise God, begin to feel uh, like we're suffocating in it because God hasn't showed up and it just doesn't seem to be getting any better. Anybody else can, uh, can uh, attest to that where, amen, all of a sudden, praise God, we are expecting God. We know he can do it. But, amen, the more we wait and the more we hold on, the more we can get more discouraged about him not showing up. Am I talking to anybody besides myself in this house? And this is where the enemy wants us at. He wants us to get to that point where we begin to feel like we're being deflated. We begin to feel like God is not really there for us. We begin to want to just give up and quit. But God sent me by today to tell you, amen, that he will never leave you nor forsake you. And when he makes us wait, we got to understand he's got a reason whether we understand the reason or not. Can I get one more amen? How many of you, let, let's just get somebody to testify for me tonight. How many of you glad that God waited before he answered your prayer? Anybody else besides me, I can say I am glad that he didn't answer right when I wanted him to. Anybody else can say that besides me? I need one or two of you to say, yes, I, I, I can attest that I'm glad that he waited. I'm glad that he didn't bring it. Amen. Thank you, Sister Yafet. That, amen. Thank you, amen, De Deaconess Brown. Amen. We, amen, amen. Praise God, Sister Tiffany. Amen. Because we have, amen, we have had to wait. Amen. And I'm so glad God knows how. And amen. God bless you, Sister Petty. What, what, what gets us, praise God, is this. Amen. Is that, praise God, when he has us to wait like that, amen, we, amen, can become impatient. Because I told you a microwave. I told you that yesterday. But listen to this. You have got to be so focused, amen, and, and give it to the Lord. It's a thing called I left it at the altar. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, let me talk to somebody. Sometimes you got to leave some things at the altar and stop bringing them home. Uh-uh. You got to stop, amen, allowing that thing to stay with you night and day. Sometimes it can be, uh, 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 can come, uh, give me, stop, uh, turn at you, amen, to a level, praise God, that you begin to feel like you're about to lose it. You got to sometimes, praise God, just leave it. Especially when you find that it's vexing you, it's beginning to vex your spirit, it begins to take your joy, it begins to get you depressed, get you downtrodden, it begins to make you feel God is not there. You got to then automatically be able to shake yourself. Remember, if you remember the fire alarm I told you, amen, that smoke detector, amen, when you begin to start seeing those things, you know, praise God, God, the devil is trying to make you feel that God is not with you. He's trying to make you feel depressed and sad. Amen. The last thing you need, praise God, when you're waiting on God in a way and you're going through something, is something else to add on to it. And amen. And when we allow the enemy start to begin to play in our mind and begin to re reflect, amen, things are not going well, praise God, we'll begin to, praise God, add our own stuff and we'll lose our energy and our faith. We'll lose our, 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 our endurance, amen, and we'll 
stop working, praise God, and stop being faithful. But you got to, amen, sometimes just leave it at the altar, especially when it's heavy, when you feel the smoke detector going out, and you know that that's the adversary just constantly pegging at you, making you think God is not there. You got to say to yourself every time it comes, uh-uh, I gave that to God. I am not going to pick it up. Praise God. It's God's to handle the way he said handle it. I am not, absolutely not going to let it keep coming at me and attacking me the way it is. I am determined. Come on, somebody, that I'm not going to let it. And you got to leave it. I leave it at the altar. Leave it at the altar. And sometimes we got to fast and pray to leave it at the altar because if we don't, Praise God, amen. The enemy can come so to you like a flood and begin to take you over. You can wake up in the morning and all of a sudden he's attacked you to a way because you're waiting on God for something, amen. And we have to, amen, be at the point to say, I got to leave this altar. I don't have any other choice but to say God is at the altar. Y'all not hearing me, praise God. Because if you don't, he will make you suffocate in that situation, Amen. So what I'm trying to tell you, praise God, while you're waiting, you have got to, praise God, be to the point, amen, that you trust in God. This is why we got to be prayed up and fasted up, amen, and word up right now. You got to be meditating. You got to spend that quality time while you're yet at peace. You got to have some stamina so, amen, when these things come, you got some strength. Is that all right, praise God? One of the things they always tell you, the best time, praise God, if you're going to get any kind of surgery, they want you the healthiest you can be. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Anytime you're going through something, God wants you the healthiest you can be. And we should never, listen to it, we should never, amen, ever be to a point where the devil's got us weak. Amen. We should always work to not to be weak. Is that all right? Praise God. So with being saying that, praise God, we begin to look at, amen, this other one. Amen. We look at the one, praise God. I told you, praise God. We even down to this weight, I showed you, amen, Genesis, praise God, the 40th chapter, and I explained to you, praise God, my boy named Joseph, amen, how he had to deal with it, and I'm so glad he dealt with it the way he did. So, praise God, go in there, amen, the 40th to the 41st chapter, all about Joseph, how he had to wait, praise God, amen. But Psalms, I told you, Psalm 34 and 24, be strong and let your heart take courage. And all your all who hope in the Lord. Now, the reason I want you to get that scripture first is because I'm gonna tell you when he say no. Uh, God does tell us no. God does tell us no. And guess what? You should tell your children no. Sometimes praise God. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You should never give your children everything they want. Oh, I say I know some of you ain't gonna like that. That word no is a blessing sometimes. I am glad that God gave me some no's. Anybody with me, praise God? I am absolutely sanctified and hallelujah, you speaking in tongue, glad that God has given me some no's. Amen. I am so, so glad that God gave me some no's. Oh, I'm the only one. I am so glad that God told me no when I was asking him for something. I'm glad God didn't answer my prayer. I'm glad God knew better not to let me have it at that season or at all. Anybody with me, I would have destroyed myself, probably be backslid, probably be somewhere in jail or somewhere in hell. Don't know where I would have wind up being behind, amen, that yes. But God knew, amen, God knows the bigger picture for our lives. God has a bigger picture for our lives, amen, and he knows that what we may ask for is best that we don't have. It's the best thing that we don't even have it, amen. Anybody understand that, praise God? Anybody understand that no is absolutely sometimes the greatest blessing? Don't you know it's good? Amen. How many of you had to tell your children no and it was only because you loved them? Come on, somebody. It wasn't being mean. It was because you knew better for them that they didn't know for themselves. Somebody help me out. You knew, praise God, you knew that if you told them they could go or do that, it would cause them problems. They could not see that far. They did not understand as well. And God, amen, does the same thing with us. He sometimes tells us no because he sees a bigger picture, praise God. Amen. And so he gives it to a praise God, knowing that what we may ask for is the most negative thing that could occur in our lives and cause us some things. Amen. Is that all right? Listen to this, and this is what I love. Listen to that. No, sometimes, amen, we get so all irritated, but guess what? God may have something better on his mind for you. <laughs> I like that, praise God. His no may mean that, no, I got something better for you. I got something better for you. Y'all ain't hearing me, praise God. 
Amen. I remember, praise God, I'll never forget. I had an eye on a car, praise God, and I wanted this car, praise God. Amen. I wanted it, and somehow that was just not working out. I just couldn't understand why I couldn't go down here and buy this car because I had good credit, but it looked like everything, praise God, wasn't going well. And so, praise God, I didn't buy the car. Amen. So, uh, so I, you know, I'm a little disappointed because I went to the Lord and said, Lord, I want that car. Bless me that I have this car, but I couldn't get it. Amen. But about three weeks, amen, or maybe four weeks later, maybe about two months later, amen, I was driving down the highway, praise God, amen, and seeing that car that I wanted on the side of the road. Y'all hear me? Broke down on a gone. It was sitting on the side of the highway. I turned around the next exit, went back and looked in and wanted to make sure it was the car that I was looking at. And I sit right there and said, God, I thank you for having more wisdom than I did. That everything, praise God, that looked good on the outside ain't always good on the inside. And God knew right then and, and that made me understand that that no sometimes God gives us is the greatest blessing I could ever have. Somebody help me out, praise God. Sometimes he's telling us no because you have bigger, and guess what? I did get a better car, amen, because I waited just a little longer, amen, held on just a little, saved a little more money, amen. Not only that, the right car, right time, and the right season came my way. So I am glad, praise God, that God knew to give me that no, amen. It, it may seem negative, and some of us, praise God, amen, feel like God has got, but he's got a plan. Let me help you out. Don't you know God's got a plan and purpose for our lives? And sometimes, praise God, he never gives us the total plan. And like I told y'all through a few lessons back, I am so glad he doesn't. Because if he did, praise God, we'd be some crazy kind of folk. We'd be out here already be arrogant. Amen. We wouldn't have confidence. We'd have arrogance. I told you, there's nothing wrong with it. We're not arrogant. We're just confident. I like that, praise God. But in this, amen, if you knew everything, you knew it was written down on paper, you, some of us would become so arrogant and so big-headed that, amen, nobody could do anything with you. And then sometimes, praise God, we wouldn't have the confidence. We wouldn't have the ability to go to God for what we need. So listen, so God has a plan, amen, for every one of our lives. I, I, I've so told you that, praise God, amen. I've said that scripture to you a many a day, praise God. I have a plan for you, praise God, one of good, not of evil, with a great expected end, praise God. He's telling us, amen, there that he has, he thoughts of us and he's plans for us, praise God. And sometimes we don't understand those plans. And what we come to, praise God, is our own ideas of what we need. And God does not see what we're asking that will fit in in the destiny he has for us. But we don't understand that because we haven't gotten that far. But God is already already at the end, already at your destiny with his vision for you. But you're right here at maybe at the start line or in the middle or wherever. And you have no understanding that God is already working this thing out for your good. And what I'm saying to you, so that no, amen, is sometimes good. You need to work for God. Say, so God told me no. Amen. I know it's hard, praise God, because you hoped and you prayed and you desired. Amen. I wanted that house. I wanted this to go well. I wanted this to happen. Amen. Even down to, amen, a loved one sick and then have God allows him to go to heaven. And you wonder why? All that, praise God, lines up, come on somebody, with God's destiny and plan. Amen. And so we have to understand all this works for the good of them that love what? The Lord. Romans 8 and 20. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Everything works for the good of them that loves the Lord. Amen. And call according to his purpose. Now, let me help you all praise God. Amen. Praise God. Listen to this. Listen to this. The key thing, amen, on all this, the key thing, listen to this, and I'm going to help some of you out, is that when you go to the Lord's Prayer in, in, in Matthew, the sixth chapter, and say, thy will be done. Come on, somebody. So in that world, let me say it again. Lord God, here's what I'm praying, but Lord, let thy will be done. Come on, oh, let me say it one more time. Maybe some of you catch it. God, I know this is what I need. This is what I'm asking for. This is what I think is a need. But God, I don't want my will. I want your will. Oh, y'all, let me say it another way. God, I know, Lord, if it don't come, I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to lose a lot of things, God. But Lord God, let thy will be done. If you see fit Lord, that I don't live in this house anymore. I'm all right with it, God, because I trust your God no matter what. Lord, let your will be done. God, if, if it's that for me, my season to go to heaven is all right with me. Thy will be done, God. I am So when he says no, you're going to say, Lord, thy will be done. Y'all not trying to help me. Instead of looking at it, praise God, as God's forgotten about you, you can say, Lord, you thought enough of me and loved me enough to tell 
me no. Come on, somebody. And then look what you're supposed to do. And start expecting a difference. You're supposed to be opening up mailboxes, whatever it is. You're supposed to be looking for checks. You're supposed to be looking every day. I'm expecting. Get up out of the bed. So where it may be today. Y'all don't hear me. What you going to send my way, God? Because if God telling you no, if God allows something to go, God knows he's got something greater for you. Can I get an amen? Because God would never leave us, never forsake us, and never let us lack anything that we need. Come on, someone. He may not give us all our desires, but he's going to make sure we got our needs. I need about 15 of you say, all right, thy will, God, thy will. So that no, amen, is just as good as a yes. That no is just as good as boom right now. Because see, God can answer in a moment. God can change a thing right now. It don't, it don't take God but us. It don't, look, it's already done. That's how quick he can do it. But sometimes God, amen, doesn't move that fast. Sometimes I see God move, amen. I pray, praise God, and it comes right to me, boom, right in my lap. I didn't have to do nothing. I said, like, Lord, I thank you. I didn't have to move. I didn't have to sweat. I didn't have to wait. God moved and answered right then and there. And I begin to say, God, how? awesome my God is. How, oh, I begin to just worship him because he moves just that fast. But get, amen. But I'm willing, praise God, and when he moves that fast, I'm willing to celebrate him and give him the glory. But when he tells me no, I'm willing to do the same. And this is what we have to do. Understand that if we are really in God's hand, n listen, here's what it takes. You got to know this word. Because see, some of you, praise God, when you get a no and things fall apart, you think, praise God, God has, amen, God really wasn't on your side. But you got to really love on this thing right here. You got to really love on this. All right, can I be honest? Let's talk one other thing. How many of you, praise God, amen, thought that that person was the one and God let him leave out of your life or let her leave out of your life? And, and it was devastating because you prayed. You, oh, God, do it, Lord, do it, Lord. You done fasted, amen. You you put oil in his shoes and anointed clothes, amen, when you wash the clothes. You you put a little oil in the food, praise God. All those things, praise God, but it looked like God let it go past. God let it not to be so, amen. You begin to say, God, why, 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 amen. But then you go back and look 10, 15 years later, and you seen that same person. You said, I see why there, God. It, <laughs> anybody besides me, Come on, somebody, y'all ain't trying. I'm going to be all right in a minute. I'm going to still enjoy myself. Anybody been there to see that God had a plan to move that person or move that thing out of your life, not allow you to have that because he had a bigger plan? And listen, if sometimes God give us what we want, it can make us delay where he's taking us. Sometimes he keeps things away so we can keep moving. Don't you know, praise God, some of us, once we get what we want, we'll sit back and start doing nothing. And sometimes God said, no, uh -uh, I'm not going to give it to you because praise God, I know I've got more for you. And I know that if I give it to you, you're going to sit back on the couch and that's all you're going to do. God is amen. We want you to keep moving. Wants you to keep growing. Wants you to keep flowing. Praise God. And that no praise God should press you towards your mark. It shouldn't then make you give up and quit on God and be so disappointed. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes it feels but I, really click real quick and said, well, God told me no. He loves me because I love my children. I told them no a lot of times. That's why I believe they just about where they are. Amen. Because they know a no. They know a whipping. And they know what a blessing is. So praise God. I believe that all played a part of them having the stamina to, amen, not expect everything to go into their hands. Not only that, know that, amen, that they daddy love them if it's a no or a yes. So with that being said, saints of God, remember, God will tell you no. Remember, he knows his bigger picture, praise God. He knows what's best for you, and he will. He knows what's not best for you. Come on, somebody. All right, says that prayer. Uh, amen. He also, praise God, has a bigger picture and a better thing in mind for you. And he does not, praise God, God does not give us what we ask for. He remembers and he gives us what's going to make our plan the best for him. Is that all right? So sometimes God would not give you what you ask for, but he's giving you what is needed for the plan he has for your life. Amen. How many of you know what I'm talking about? I was in my, uh, listen, I've learned, praise God. Let me tell you what happened. Amen. I was, um, amen, working on uh, something. Amen. I found a little uh, a piece and I didn't even know what it was. I did not know what it was and I threw it away and praise God. Then I went to start putting something together. Let's check this out. I'm teaching you something right here. And amen. Then when I look at the instructions, I needed that piece I had thrown away about three days ago. And because I threw that piece away, amen, I, I didn't know 
I couldn't put it together totally. That's that part of what God's doing sometimes. You may not understand what he's blessing you with because it doesn't fit anything that you know about right now. But when he started putting all the pieces of the puzzle together, you're going to be able to go back and grab that piece. That one, because he done gave you a no and, sh and you're looking over here and said, what am I going to do with this? You better take that and keep it. Amen. Because I've learned, praise God, when I don't know what it is, I'm very cautious about throwing it away. Because I don't know, praise God, if it fix something that I don't know right away. And I've learned that over and over and over again that God has showed me, oh, I know where that piece is. Oh, I know where that go now. Amen. So this is what God is doing with this part. So don't get disappointed when God gets us to that point. And says no to us, yes, but not like that. Y'all don't hear me. And yes, and wait. Those are areas of disappointment, praise God, that some of us, amen. All of us want that, boom, God do it. And you wake up, it's already done. Amen. Come on, sister. You're talking about a piece of puzzle. You better watch it, praise God. I preach the message about puzzle pieces. Hey, come on, living where anybody remember that, praise God. Amen. God, amen. It doesn't look like we'll put a piece in that puzzle. Amen. Look like it fit, but it doesn't. So, praise God. We got to understand that way. So, anybody got this down packed besides me? Is a value in waiting, is a value in trusting. Sometimes God lets us grow on that stage of waiting. God let us grow with faith to know that he answers. Sometimes God is equipping you because a bigger thing is coming. Amen. And that you're going to need to have that kind of faith to know that God will do it. Is that all right? Am I making sense to the house of Zion tonight? I pray I am. Praise God. I pray you're being encouraged. So amen. Amen to you all. Praise God. Listen to this. No. Yes, but wait. Yes, but not like that. Those are areas that God will work in we, amen. And you can't be disappointed because you got to realize by this word of God, come on, that God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. He said, I will bless you. Praise God. You're going out and you're coming in. So praise God. Do not get disappointed when God does not answer. Is that all right? Anybody else catch that besides me? Praise God. Three days we talked about it. Three days. The one was about the assignments. Amen. We want God to do. God called us to do it. Then nobody else helps us. We get disappointed. Then we learn, praise God, about the one. Amen. We talked about, praise God, our prayer, praise God, and how God doesn't answer right away in, in these three areas today. Is that all right? All right, let's go before the Lord in prayer. I pray, praise God, that you don't be disappointed, but we trust God in him answering. Answering, praise God, whether, praise God, we know it or not. Is that all right? Don't throw that piece away. Don't throw it away. It may mean something in the long run. Heavenly Father, I'm grateful, God, for this opportunity to share. I'm grateful, God, how you continue to teach us, Lord, that we don't have to be disappointed when you're moving in the way. We just got to learn to trust you, God. Oh, God, because that's just a pothole that the adversary wants us to step into, a pothole, God, that he wants us to drive into and be disappointed. But the devil is a lie. I decree right now from this day forward, God, whether you answer it or not, and whether I don't understand what you're doing, I believe, God, it's working for my good. When you answer it, don't answer it, God, and I, and I seem to never Never understand the outcome. I am not going to question you because God, I trust that Lord, you have a better plan. I trust God that you know better than I ever know what's expected and what's going to happen in my life. So I celebrate God to know even today. I celebrated God when you just do not move according to my desire, according to what I was focused on. I am grateful, God, that you have a better way of doing it. I trust you, God, from this day forward, Lord, that I'm not going to be disappointed that you don't answer the way I want. God, God, and I'm going to work this work, God, no matter if anybody else show up, if nobody else, God, listens, if I'm the only one on the choir that really obeys, if I'm the only one on the usher board that wears a uniform, if I'm the only one, God, that does whatever you've assigned me to, I shall not be disappointed to ever quit. I am going to give you praise because I'm doing it to glorify you. And anytime my prayer, God, if I pray to you, God, I'm going to wait for your change. And God, if you don't, Lord, and if it never changes, I'm going to praise you and expecting something greater. And in the name of Jesus, I do decree all these things, God. I ask God in the name of Jesus that you look upon this nation, God. We ask God that you continue to bring unity into this place, God. Bless God that the culture different, the diversities, God, begin to understand we're all covered under the same blood, and that's the blood of Jesus. Help us, God, in the name of Jesus, have the ability to love through stuff and bless others, God. Show the light, God, in the way you've given us in the glorious name. We speak, God, never before, God, that you're going to touch this pandemic.
pandemic in a way we do not expect God before it's all over. Just like sometime God, some of the prayers and things we're going through is going to be gone all of a sudden because that's the way you operate. And God, you're going to get the glory out of whatever's going to happen because God, you're still yet in control of all things, no matter how it looks, no matter what nobody else say. You have the authority to move in the way you say so. God, we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus for how you're blessing. Now, Heavenly Father, continue, God, to bless, Lord, in this pandemic. Bless, God, those essential workers, those, God, that is out there every time I go to the grocery store, every time, God, I go to the flows, they're there. God, bless them, God. Keep them, Lord. Protect them, God, in the name of Jesus. Bless, God, those health care workers, those, God, that are there on the front lines, God, taking care of those that are sick. If I have to go to the doctor or anything, God, they are there. We speak over their lives, God, but we speak salvation into the atmosphere for them, God. But keep them, Lord. Now, God, everyone that's in the hospital that may be sick with this pandemic, oh, God, even down to the ones, God, that are losing loved ones, Lord. We know that some people are grieving the loss of people they love. We speak, God, into atmosphere right now in the name of Jesus that you will just touch lives as only you can, God. Do it, God, according to your plan. We speak into the atmosphere your blessings. Bless God in the name of Jesus. Continue to bless our elderly, God, in a great way, Lord. We ask that you will favor. Favor our elderly, God. Bless them and cover them, Lord. You know every one of them, God. You know the needs, Lord. If there's one in need, God, send somebody by there today to bless their lives. God, in the name of Jesus, now favor our babies. Touch our little ones, God, that's innocent and don't know how to take care of themselves. We speak into the atmosphere that you and you alone will cover them, God, according to your word. Now, Heavenly Father, tomorrow is Father's Day. And Lord, some of us grieve the loss of our father. Some of us are heavy, God. Some of us, God, are going to have go through a day just like Mother's Day. But God, we know, Lord, if we trust in you, Lord, all things will be right. God, because you've been a father to us, God, uh, to the fatherless a lot of years, God. There's some of us, God, that didn't have our fathers in our lives. There's some of us, God, that went through a lot of struggles with our fathers. Some of us are hurt by our fathers. But God, we speak healing over those hurts. God, in the name of, we speak forgiveness right now. We speak, God, that people will forgive their parents and their loved ones. Forgive them right now, God, in the name of Jesus loose that hurt from us, God, that we can walk into tomorrow, God, with our hands lifted up. Now, we bless every daddy, God, every father, God, every father figure that has been there, God, to pour into people's lives. Encourage them, God, that their work was not in vain. We ask, God, that you encourage them, Lord, and bless them in great ways, Lord, for we know that you left the men in charge and speak over their lives today. Now, bless, heal, strengthen those men, God. Let tomorrow be a great day, God, that men will be blessed and honored, God, that will lift you up and magnify you. I speak, God, today that it be a, a revival of the men coming back to you, to the church, God, that through amen, this Father's Day, there be many saved and many begin to draw that relationship back to you in a great way, God, that there be the leaders they're called to be. Now, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for all that you're doing. In the precious anointed name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen. Don't forget to bless those men in your life. I tell you, amen, bless them, call your dad, call whoever was, praise God. Love on them, praise Praise God. Show them that you care. Praise God. Bless them. Amen. Encourage them. You just don't know what you do. Some people, praise God, every now and then need to hear that they've done something for you to bless you. So do it. Take that time out. Praise God. I know they're probably not looking for it, but you need to bless them. I'm going to ask all y'all tomorrow if you bless the man servant or the, I mean the, that man who served in your life or the father figure or whoever he may be. Praise God. And those that have lost their father like me, amen. Remember whatever seed he planted in your life, even if he planted nothing, he's taught you how not to do better. Bad. Is that all right? Love everyone. God knows I do. And there's absolutely not a thing you can do about it. See you tomorrow at 630. Be blessed.